Welcome to Groups. We're recording this on Fat Tuesday, or as I like to call it, Morbidly Obese Tuesday. Is that too far? Morbidly obese. You know, I'm staying with it. Welcome to the recording of Fat Tuesday group questions. People are probably in their groups eating snacks. Just What about Husky Sunday? <laughs> all right. Let's keep going here. I want all of that kept in. I think that's a great way to start groups. Uh, so we've, we've changed up our format for groups questions a little bit. We're going to have some different sections in here. I'll intro them a little bit as we get going. And we're going to work our way through um, our groups material on the church in Thyatira. And when we look at this today, what I want you to do is to start out, and there's a little section on your uh, groups questions called Have Some Fun. And in this, I would like you to think back to this week's teaching when I showed you who my inner kind of emotion, remember Inside Out, the movie, and we showed that, my inner emotions were. Uh, my favorite is Dame Judi Dench. Uh, for disgust, nobody can be more disgusted than Dame Judi Dench. She's just, she's just dis- like she just looks at you and you just feel filthy inside and out. I love Dame Judi Dench. She's one of my favorites. Uh, she's actually from uh, a lot of stuff, but in uh, uh, Pride and Prejudice, she's um, Lady Catherine. You know, heaven and earth, have the shades of Pemberley come to thus? Like she's just so horrifyingly mean. So yeah, when we did that this last Sunday. What you would have seen is I used some cartoon characters, different movie characters to describe the emotions, the, the characters of my emotions living inside of me. Take some time right now, have some fun as a group, and uh, maybe assign to each other some of the different people uh, that are the emotions living inside of you. And when someone gets mad, then you found out like maybe they're crazy, you know, like angry emotion. Pick a really good one for that. That'd be awesome. I just want to, you know what, group unity. That's what this is not going to achieve. But have some fun together and talk about that, and we'll jump back into questions. All right, now that you've done that, hopefully the kids were a part of it and had some fun. Uh, We're going to start with our kids' questions. Kids, question number one, is there anything in your life or anyone in your life who consistently tries to get you to do things that are wrong. How do you respond to those temptations? Question two, if you were going to run in a race, how would you train? Would you do certain exercises, eat certain foods to get ready? I eat certain foods. I eat all foods. Certainly I do. Um, But would you eat certain foods? How would you train to get ready? Um, And how do you train your spiritual life to be obedient to Jesus? And what training do you do to keep your spirit strong in your spiritual life? Question number three. If someone from your school was to describe you using a movie or a cartoon character, who do you think they would choose? And what does that character reveal about who you are at school? All right, kids, I hope you have a great day. Thanks for taking time answering the questions. Enjoy your group's time and try not to break stuff. It's just not cool. As a parent, it's so expensive to replace what you break. So just, I don't know, just be nice. No, actually, just go break stuff. We'll talk about it later. Have a great day. Personal reflection. In the message, we discussed how... um, When people became Christians in Thyatira, their their faith compelled them not to take part in certain religious practices and different things that were outside of the Christian faith. And because of this, many of them, many of the Christians were excluded socially, economically, financially. So um, when we become close to Jesus, there are parts of our lives that naturally start to die out. 
when we choose a close friendship with him, certain things change and certain things leave in order to make room. So question number one, what has changed in you and in your life since you first met Jesus? Question number two, is there anything in your life that has been removed that used to be a part of your life that is totally gone now, or maybe it's just gone away because of the place that Jesus now occupies? Question number three. What would be the concern if nothing in your life had changed since you began your relationship with Jesus? What would your concern be if there's been no change at all? The next new section in group's content is called Eat This Book. Now, Eat This Book is actually a phrase I stole. Uh, I lovingly borrowed from a theologian and a person I think very highly of in the Christian faith, uh, Eugene Peterson. He's the one who transliterated the Bible from you know, the original Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic into the message version. So it's not a word-for-word translation. If you've ever read the message, it's, it's a transliteration. It tries to make the language flow a little. He's a bright scholar. He is a pastor and a prophet and in many ways a poet. And I have a lot of love for Eugene Peterson. But in his book, Eat This Book, he actually uses that phrase to say, when you talk about Scripture, don't just skim over it. Take the words, chew on them, take them into your life, let the nutrients of scripture move into your body and transform you from the inside out. So every week as part of groups, we're going to do a little section called Eat This Book. And it's just a chance for you to really chew on, wrestle with some of the really tender and good, the filet mignon of scripture, you know, that, that part that is just really good, but also some of the tougher places where it's like, wow, is there anything for me in that? And there is. It's, it's all God-breathed. It's all God-inspired. And so we're going to talk. Every week we're going to have this section. We call it Eat This Book. Here we go. Question number one from Eat This Book. Reread. Uh, do me a favor. Reread Revelation 2, 20 to 23. After you do that, we'll have question one out of Eat This Book. Question one. What does Jezebel look like in our modern context? Question number two, have you ever been influenced by a Jezebel and what was the effect of their influence in your life? Question number three has a question and then a part A, so make sure you jump into that um, following this question. How do you feel when you read the punishment of God that is pronounced on Jezebel and on those who follow her? So there's in this today, we're going to have an eat this book in honor of Fat Tuesday, eat this book, part do. A little bit extra, something you can dive into if you have time as groups. Uh, it's just an extra section. Read Revelation 2, 24 and 25, and then we'll come back with some questions for you. Question number one in part do of eat this book. God says that resisting in this scripture, he, he says resisting the false teachers is a job. And he's not going to add any more burdens to them to live into. He knows that just doing that is work enough for itself. So question one would be this. Describe a situation where you hung on just long enough to survive the day. And then do me a favor. Go into your group's question paper and answer part A and B on that. Describe a situation where you hung on just long enough to survive the day, where the burden for today was enough and you couldn't take anything else. Question number two 
out of section part D of Eat This Book. So this is more of a statement with two sub-questions under it, but I think it's an important one. Endurance is an important theme within Scripture. If you've ever trained for a long race, you don't start with a big number. You work your way slowly but surely up to the longer distances. You don't start with 10 miles. You start with one or two and work your way up. And um, what you do is those long distance runs, as you get up to them, they prepare you and give you endurance and strength for the race day. So how do you work to develop endurance and strength in your spiritual life? Go ahead and answer that. Check out the following question for it, and then we'll be back to close groups. Well, thank you for joining us for groups this week. As we wrap up, one of the things I want to encourage you in is uh, if, you, if you're one of these Christians who you can go out and kind of spiritually run a marathon, praise God for that. That's awesome. Well done. If you're one of the Christians who is just getting off the couch and you need to go for a walk and just beginning to develop sp- spiritual endurance, do that. And don't be ashamed of where you at, where you are at because I like this quote by Matt Chandler. It's okay not to be okay. It's just not okay to stay there. I invite you to a life of transformation. These churches are receiving letters that call them upwards into Christ. And that calling is for us to live into. Hope you have a great week. And um, hopefully the blizzard wasn't too bad. Um, I'm going to go out and truly live into Fat Tuesday. This is literally a day named after my physique. They should call it Eric Tuesday. Right? I think Eric Tuesday would be good. No? It's horrible? <laughs> I feel like I'm shaped like the Patch King. Those little donuts. I didn't have one. Real quick, in groups, raise your hand. Did you have them? Have you ever aspirated the, the powdered sugar? You're like, this is going to be so good. <laughs> You're like, All right, go ahead and shut it off. Yeah. Oh, my gosh.